from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hi, and welcome to theCUBE Virtual and our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. We are theCUBE Virtual and I'm your host, Justin Warren. And today my guest is Shauna Wolverton, Executive Vice President of Product at Zendesk. And she's coming to us from Oakland, California. Shauna, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having me. It is, it is lovely to be here. How, how's the weather over there in Oakland? Uh, we just suddenly went from summer to winter, which uh, after the weather we've had is uh, no complaints. Ah, uh, right. Well, as, as a resident of Melbourne, where we have four seasons in one day, I, I am very familiar with rapid weather changes. So uh, hopefully it's not too cold for you and uh, you get a little bit of nicer weather just before you go fully into winter. Absolutely. Now Zendesk and Amazon have a pretty close relationship is my understanding. And uh, we, we know that Amazon is famous for its customer centric uh, attitude. Uh, the wonderful thing about customers, of course, is that they're, they're never really happy with everything that we have. So how does Zendesk fit in with that, with that relationship with Amazon and how's your approach to customers? Yeah, I mean, I, the relationship we have with Amazon really excites me. We really have gone uh, all in on our move to the cloud. They're our sole provider um, and we run all of our services um, on AWS. And in addition, we have some great partnerships with um, uh, Amazon Connect, which uh, allows us to provide great telephony and, and call center services to our customers. We have um, a great uh, partnership around EventBridge and uh, as well as App Connect. So I think there is a fantastic relationship that we have where we're able to deliver not just our basic services, but um, to really take advantage of a lot of the services that Amazon and AWS uh, provide the, so that we can you know, sort of accelerate our own roadmap and deliver great uh, new features to our customers. Now, a lot of people have gone through a pretty similar uh, adoption of the cloud at the moment. Um, unfortunate reason for doing so, but it certainly has driven the adoption very, very quickly. Uh, Zendesk, of course, as you say, has been has been doing this for quite some time. So, what have you noticed uh, that stayed the same um, in so from last year to this year? What were you already doing that you're now noticing everyone else is discovering? Actually, this is this is pretty good. Well, you know, I think you know the the rumors of of the call center and and the telephone as a channel their demise are greatly exaggerated. I think um, for as much as we're all excited about chat and messaging and all of the different ways that we can connect with our customers, there's something about having a phone number and allowing people to pick up the phone and talk to a human uh, that that refuses to go out of style. And so I think um, you know our partnership uh, with uh, with Amazon Connect has been hugely powerful. And even, you know, um, recently when a lot of this sort of acceleration has, has picked up, we've seen, um, you know, we saw a customer who had, a, you know, a power failure, a kind of massive failure of their own phone system, be able to um, come to us, get, uh, get Connect up and running incredibly quickly and start taking thousands of calls a day. And that kind of, um, so sort of quick time to value, uh, fast start uh, ability for our customers just is hugely important um, now, but really, you know, that's always been true. Right, yeah, I mean, when people want to call you and they want to talk to you, then they're not really happy if they can't get through to that. And particularly right now, being able to make that human to human connection, for me, I know that that's, that's been a really uh, important part of, of getting through this. I work remotely most of the time. So actually speaking to humans as we're doing now is, is a really refreshing change from just seeing everything on a, on a text screen. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's interesting that the phone has actually, uh, res, has been so resilient. Um, even though we, we hear from a lot of young people say, oh, we never answer the phone when someone calls. Uh, but a lot of people are actually calling into businesses when they want to make contact or when they, when they don't see things on the website. So how does Zendesk help to to integrate with what people are doing in their online and digital channels through to what they're doing with, with phone system. Yeah, but I think fundamentally uh, people want their questions answered. One of my favorite studies that we did was around our benchmark study and we talked to millennials 
and they said the first place they go to get help is to their phone. But when you pushed it a little deeper, it was clear that they actually didn't know that the phone was for making like, phone calls. <laughs> like, it was just all of the other you know, help centers. Like, like the first way that a lot of people today are looking for answers is, you know, I want to Google it. And, and for that, you need a really great help center that has all that information out there. And then you want to have um, you know, communities where people can talk to each other and, and get help. And then you know, more and more, we're seeing the rise of messaging as a channel, both through the social channels like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, um, as well as you know native messaging, uh, kind of ongoing conversations. You, you ordered your dinner, it hasn't arrived. It's so great to be able to go into those applications and just message uh, to the business and, and figure out what's what's going on and get that sort of instantaneous response as well. Right, and, and you shared some stats with us uh, regarding how much has moved across to some of these these phone-based messaging channels. So, uh, so tickets coming in has, has risen about 50% um, and compared to some gains on, on live chat. So people are really embracing the idea of, of being able to message, not just individual, you know, talking to your friends in the, in the group chat, but actually using that to engage with, with the companies that they, they would normally use, you know, websites or, or phone. It's like, text chat is a thing. Yeah, I mean, it was funny to me, you know, I think we're still uh, in the US, not quite as far along as a lot of our international friends. It, when I, when traveling was a thing that we did, um, you know, I was always like, it was cool to see that there were, you know, billboards and ads that had WhatsApp phone numbers on them as a real, you know, way that businesses were wanting to engage. I mean, you think about be wanting to be where your customers are. And today, so many of us um, do have, you know, WhatsApp and WeChat and Line and Viber, and they're all in our pocket. And being able to provide all of those to businesses is a new way to engage, I think we're finding is hugely powerful. Right, so with with all of these dynamic changes that have, have been happening, and, and it sounds like it's actually just sort of riding the wave of what customers were, were already doing, we're just doing it just that little bit more. But have you noticed any other larger changes, possibly ones that aren't related to, to a pandemic, just general shifts that have been happening that you've seen in your customer base? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think so much of what we're seeing is that people uh, in general more, want answers quickly. And whether it's, you know, phone call is great. And like I said, people are not gonna stop calling, but I think people want to make sure less than like, I need a human to have a conversation. Um, I want, I want the answer quickly. And that's where we're really focused in both um, thinking about how we provide tools around automating some of getting those answers using uh, you know, AI and ML so that people can come to us, ask questions, and we can get them the best answer very quickly without um, having to engage a person. I think, um, this idea of quick resolution is clearly becoming one of the most important things in customer sentiment. I think we know that um, more and more this idea of how quickly I can get my questions resolved or how easy it is for me to do business with you is a huge differentiator in how people make buying choices. Mm. And that, that automation's long been a, 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 an attractive idea. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember expert systems and, and having a go at doing this kind of uh, heavily automated way of resolving particularly common issues. And I mean, we, we're familiar with, with call center chat scripts where there's, here are the top three issues and, or it will be in the IVR where it's like, we're currently experiencing this particular problem. So that resolves your question quite quickly. But there's been a big rise in things like chatbots and, and the use of AI. How far advanced is that? Because I, I still remember some of the early forays into that were a little bit flaky and that could actually exacerbate the poor customer experience. I'm already having a problem and, and now your chatbot's getting in the way. Have they gotten a lot better? Are they, are they up to the challenge? Yeah, I mean, I think what's really critical when you're thinking about automation um, in the conversations you're having with customers, it's, it's two things. One, uh, don't try to hide. That, that you're a computer, right? Um, no, no, my name is Chad. I am, I am a human. Um, I am the Chad not, bot. Yes. You're not <laughs> anyone 
Um, so I think being really clear and then, um, you know, I, I think surfacing how to um, very easily opt out of those flows. I think, um, you know, automation is great, but it's not a way, it, it, you shouldn't think of it as a way to frustrate your users, to keep them tied up until you can get to them. It really is give them some quick options. And if they don't, if, if those don't solve their problems, really make sure that you're, you've got an escape valve, right? We were, we're putting out an, a new sort of flow builder product at Zendesk and we have all of the different uh, words that someone could say that are like smashing the zero button <laughs> that, <laughs> that mean, please transfer me to a person, right? You're driving me crazy. Let me connect you to an agent. <laughs> so we're really making sure that it's easy um, for customers to provide the solution where 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 their customers can get the help they need, rather than. I, I really like that. That's that's something I think it, that gets a little bit lost in the in the focus on computers and and on automation is that the reason we do this is to help the humans. So when we have these these AI systems, it's not actually to replace. The, the human interaction is to make it better. It's it's to make, mean that we can then get to that genuine connection. Computers are fabulous and, and when they work, uh, it's when they don't, when they frustrate things that, that that bothers us. And that's generally why we're calling is that something has already gone wrong and we're a bit frustrated. So adding more frustration doesn't sound like a good approach. It sounds like Zendesk's really got that that dialed in very, very well. Is that something that you've, you've always had? Is it something that you've refined over time? And can you teach it to a bunch of other companies? <laughs> we would love to teach it to other people. No, I think, no, I, I think we have always thought about how the machines can help the humans. And I think one, it's how can they help the customers, of course, but the other side that I don't think people talk about quite as much is how can we use computers to help agents, right? So you're talking to a person and how can we take sort of the best answers that they've given to other customers and surface those um, when when a new agent is is coming on board how do we suggest um, you know the different kinds of workflows that they might want to use to solve this problem in a more dynamic way so I really like to think of of the computers never as a replacement but really as a sort of hidden superpower um, that organizations have uh, to make every agent one of their best agents right yes it it is a kind of uh, external cyborg thing. I mean, I can't remember anything these days. I, I constantly write lists and they all live in computers, but they are, th that's the kind of society that we live with today. And I think we should remember to embrace that side of things that a lot of life has actually gotten a lot better through the use of these computing systems. It's, it's not all terrible. It's not and, all and I think more companies could probably learn from Zendesk and the, the approach that you've taken to center the humans both the customers and and your internal staff, the call center and and the people who are providing this service. No one enjoys it when things are breaking and, and things have gone wrong. Being able to resolve that quickly makes a better experience for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I think we find um, over and over again, sometimes, you know, if you can handle an issue that's gone wrong um, well, you, you can actually in, induce more loyalty than you know, if someone never contacted you at all. So if you can really take advantage um, of the times you have, unfortunately, maybe messed up uh, and, and make those customers happy, you really do, um, you know, put so much in the sort of loyalty piggy bank uh, for later. It's really great. So for some of the companies that have maybe struggled with this a little bit and particularly under very trying conditions. Is, is there some advice that you could give to them? Is there some places that they should should start to investigate this when they want to improve the way that they handle customer service, perhaps with, uh, with things like Zendesk? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what what we're focused on right now is the this channel that's coming, like I said, we think a lot about social messaging, but also in native messaging um, and how you can have a sort of ongoing long-term conversation. For a long time, customer service, the sort of holy grail was chat and you could have a, an agent online and a human online and you could solve their problem and then move on, right? And, and sometimes though, those things take a little longer to solve or uh, you, know, you might have a big issue and a whole bunch of people who have an issue and maybe not enough agents to solve them. And so with messaging, we've really changed the dynamics. So 
chat was this completely synchronous, almost like a phone call kind of experience. And with messaging, you're able to live in this sort of duality where we can have a conversation if we're both here, but just like with your friends, right? Sometimes you throw a message out to a friend, you put it in your pocket, you pick it up, and you can pick up the conversation right where you left off. So bringing that paradigm into your customer support experience really allows you to take some of that fear out of handling the volume that might come from, from chat to be able to sort of have these ongoing sort of back and forth conversations over time. Um, and also, and give that, that persistence so that we're always both in the same place when we show up again together. Ah, embracing what the technology does well and avoiding what it doesn't do well. That, that sounds like a plan. Yeah. Shauna, this has been fabulous. It is it is always very edifying for me to, to hear when companies are doing well and, and centering the humans to make the technology improve all of our lives. Um, it has been wonderful to have you here on the Cube. Thanks so much. It was a lot of fun. Great. And thank you for joining in and uh, and watching us here at the Cube virtual and our special coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Do come back and uh, look for more coverage of reInvent 2020 right here on theCUBE next time. I've been your host, Justin Warren, and we'll see you again soon.